Satnam. Welcome to another edition of Sold Book Sessions. Here we are, your glowing ghosts. Sat Kirtan. And I'm not making it. Hurry up. I just lost my word. <laughs> <laughs> no, we both, we both. That's the fun part about being live. It's, um, Unrehearsed. <laughs> and you can't go cut. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. you could just cut the... <laughs> No redos. We just keep going, okay? <laughs> so let us know if, if you're tuning in live, or even if you're tuning in at a future now, present moment. Um, say hello. Let us know you're you're with us. Um, Seth Kirtan just said, Sat ah! Yeah, I found it. Jorge, our Mex friend from Mexico. Hmm? If we make a comment, then the comments pop up. Otherwise, we don't see them. So. <laughs> Stop now, everyone. <laughs> Welcome, Jorge. Welcome. From uh, Tabasco or Jalisco? Somewhere in... We met. It's so beautiful. Because he, he saw us, uh, he and his lovely partner. Ah, in San Cristobal. Well, first saw us online uh, through School of Nod, I think, one of pages. And, uh, and then I was walking... On the, the Andador in San Cristobal one day, and he's like, "Hi, hey!" hey. <laughs> <For> both of them, <laughs> like, "Hello!" And then um, he's, "I know you from from Facebook." <laughs> he's like, the "School oh, of Nod cool. or Casa del Nod." Like, oh, <laughs> like, kind of like a celebrity. <laughs> That's really <laughs> fun. <laughs> Facebook celebrity. Satnam, welcome, Jorge. It was so great to connect with you. Mm -hmm. Glad the internet brought us together. <laughs> yes. Welcome, Nicole. Yeah. Can we turn up the light a little bit? Like oh, yes. Computer dims up for so some much. reason. Can turn down. <laughs> okay. It's got to be just the right frequency, just right. which is exactly yeah, what we're talking yeah, about tonight. Teddy. Frequencies. You would put him right here. <laughs> <laughs> and another friend from San Cristobal, Anna Santiago. Ah. Um, Yo, she says. Great to have you Yo. tuning in. But is she in San Cristobal? I think she travels to the mm. States or something. Nicole and Nicole Clutie. Please. Oh, Nicole's, Nicole's tuning in regularly. Back. Yeah. Welcome. Well, we're going to tune in. Speaking Let's of tune tuning in. in. <laughs> yeah. We're going to tune in with the Adi Mug. Mm -hmm. I'll type it in here yeah. for everybody to follow along. Oh, Namo. We have a juicy theme for tonight. <laughs> so, uh, looking forward to Anna some says, hello, hello, you feedback. frequently frequency freaks. <laughs> You're all about the nod, baby. Tapping on the computer and it's making the camera move around. My apologies. Hey. 
going deep. Fully and completely hold the breath. Suspend. Allowing this frequency to tune your body, tune every cell to the inner wisdom within you, your inner guru. And then exhale, let it go. Next we chant our mantra for protection. Ad gure name, jigar gure name, sat gure name, sri guru deve. breath within you, tuning all your cells to the infinite wisdom, and exhale. Welcome, everybody. Who's Pamela? Who's that? Oh, <laughs> Honey Dodge Car. Honey Dodge Car, Valerie, Jeremy. Satnam, so great to have you all with us. No, it's, not, it's Jamie. Is oh, Jamie. It Jamie Carl. Is it Carl? Jamie Carl. Hmm. Good to see some new faces. We've had a few new members joining this this week in the past week. Um, Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Actually, since I made the post yesterday, um, it's a little lead in for this um, podcast tonight. Speaking about um, frequencies and faking <laughs> frequencies, and, um, I, few people, I think about four four people, I think, 
uh, applied to join our growing soul book tribe. Um, so thank you. One of them didn't didn't uh, answer the three questions, the three magic questions. So, so that person. It's funny. Usually when when somebody doesn't, I'll I'll, I'll send them a personal message you know, to say, well, we have this requirement if we don't know the person. Mm -hmm. um, usually they don't respond sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, we, we, we want to, we want to maintain a, yeah. a certain boundary. You know? It's a sacred safe space. And mm -hmm. we really honor that with all our members want to maintain that so people are answering the questions and we have no way of feeling into who they are and what they're about and therefore we want to know something about <laughs> <laughs> we want to know something about you and your intention for, for joining the group and to know that people are respectful because we have some rules mm -hmm. most groups have rules right? we, you yeah. know, rules are made to be broken <laughs> And that's our role is, is as moderators, administrators to bend, you know, try to maintain some structure mm -hmm. and adhering to the rules and, and of course allowing some leeway. <laughs> yeah, but above all, we want to keep it personal. We want to yes. have this personal interaction with you. We want to, you to feel safe so that you feel mm -hmm. held and inspired to share from your heart and we can all hold yeah. each other in that. Yeah, we're not into quantity, having huge numbers, uh, as much as having qual quality. Mm -hmm. Rather have a small group of quality people who are really committed to the, the soul journey and the soulmate path. Uh, whether you're, you're looking to call in your ideal soulmate or already found that person and wanting to deepen that connection mm -hmm. and, and share your, your wisdom and experience your um, nightmares and you know, <laughs> highest dreams, hopefully, or the dreams that we're here to support wherever you are in your path. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, and so we're inviting you again to, to share here on the podcast. So, so thanks for the hearts. Hey, Raj, and some heart. Oh, there she is. <laughs> yeah, I can, can see your little face on the, you know, the hearts. <laughs> Yeah, like pop into the... the profile picture and then the heart. Pop, 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 pop. Um, of course, comments. We're inviting you to, to leave comments here. Um, again, even if you're watching this at a later date, because we will leave the podcast usually up on the page. And we, we, we love to respond. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we're here for. Why we created this group. And, uh, and we have got a juicy topic tonight. That we do. And you don't have to just respond here, of course, in the live. You can you can submit a post. And again, we our basic requirement for that is it's something from you, your own heart, your own experience. It's you know, relevant to this group theme. Mm -hmm. you know? And if you do want to share something that is created by someone else, a poem or a song or anything we just ask that you tell us a little bit about how this resonates with you what your experience mm -hmm. with it is what it brings up for you so mm -hmm. yeah we want to feel you we want to connect to you soul to soul that's what we're all about here connecting soul to soul mm -hmm. yeah. i think we spoke about this on a pre previous podcast but it's worth saying again especially for those who didn't hear it before <laughs> um we spoke about the inner circle mm -hmm. and within the inner circle, I like to call it the innermost circle. And, and that's how we see the, the soul book tribe. It's, it's our inner circle. We're inviting strangers um, from space book realm <laughs> to come and join our inner circle. That's why, again, why we have these certain requirements to, so we can hold space for everyone mm -hmm. and keep a safe, space um and then within the inner circle is even a deeper innermost circle which i know is represented by our uh, premium soul online soul program yeah, yes. called soul to soulmate um so the innermost circle is even go, taking another step deeper 
you know, where the more intimate, smaller group and where this it's almost demanded. You don't really have a choice. You have to, you have to share of yourself. You can't, really, <laughs> you can't hide in the innermost circle. You can still do it to some degree in, in the inner circle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why at least we, we all, we want to have a connection with you when you're coming in. So in case you kind of bash into the mist for a while. Um, so so do let us know, even with a little satnam or like like Valerie mm. just did. It's so it's nice to, to yeah, hear that's from. to know that you're tuning in and Sol de Gaia. Is it? It's another new name. Sol welcome. That's a different soul. Sol de Gaia. Yeah, beautiful. Gaia. Wow. It's the goddess energy. Beautiful. Ah. Uh, Maggie's Man here. Well, <laughs> Maggie has a new name. She does. Congratulations, sir. We love your name. Adi, Jai Adi Jaidevkar. Wow, it's a powerful mm. name. Powerful and beautiful. I wonder if we if you could do the nickname, because I, I did it on Messenger, but it might be possible to do it on uh, inside a group like Soulbook, where you can change your name. You can put your mm. spiritual I don't know if I, I don't think you can on your group. <laughs> Make you show up as your Facebook profile. Satnam Adi Jai Devkar. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was interesting. I, um, well, I'll start the discussion and in inviting you guys to share. Um, <laughs> And we have a we have a man too, don't we? Because the men too. I want to hear from the men in the group. Um, <laughs> so. What inspired me to, to put, make that post last night about um, faking orgasm? <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. And don't take it personally if you. If you um, Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but what inspired me was, was a post I made. Well, you'll notice if, if you've been following the recent posts here on Soulbook, the post that I posted the day before yesterday, I guess, was um, a meme that says, well, which is our the title of our yeah, show tonight. title for the tonight show, which is, you, you can't, can't fake, fake a frequency. frequency. <laughs> it was a perfect uh, maxim motto for, for a school of nod, which mm -hmm. is like the mothership because of, of this, this inner and innermost circle, school of nod, the school of vibration, sound current, frequency. So we're all about frequency. So so it started with that. You can't fake a frequency. And I think I was looking at that, you know, commenting or just meditating on this, you can't fake a frequency. And then, then it hit me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so many women mm -hmm. fake orgasms. Yeah, we're, we're really curious <laughs> to know. Um, or even if they don't now, they may have in the past for many different reasons. I mean, well, we had, I had one uh, friend, she, she's, she's in the group, I think in Soul Book, I'm not sure. But she's been, I shared this, she gave me some feedback, okay, because she saw the, the meme with the box, we chose that one, we, we did a little research, Seth Kirchner found that a box full of Secrets. Story. <laughs> Stories. Is, fake orgasm stories. Did you like that? I liked it. Um, and she, I sent her um, a link to that post. She didn't read the post. I didn't know, of course. She, she, her comment was like, oh, well, this isn't really applicable to me and my friends. I don't know any friends of ever faked orgasm, or at least since they were maybe teenagers. So that's interesting. I'm, that's one thing I'm curious to know. Maybe maybe it's only happened when you were a teenager or early years. Um, but then I thought maybe maybe she didn't read the post. When I said to you, I think mm -hmm. I mentioned it's like, and I, so I, I wrote back to her. I said, did you did you take the time to read the the post with that meme? And sure enough, she didn't. She was just commenting on the meme. Mm -hmm. Interesting, right? It's so easy to misinterpret or for communication lines, because if I think if, if she had read the my post, um, she said it was much more than just talking about faking organs. Mm -hmm. right? what, what did you want to say, Danny? Do you want to 
Did, did. Okay, well, let's see what we have. Six year old. Oh. Nicole, six year old, requested a spiritual name recently. He's been given the name Atma oh. Nihal saying, Wow. Hey, right, Guru. I it's love my children. Yeah, it's a nice and beautiful thing to do for your child. And if you want us to do a, <laughs> a mantra composition for your child, well, that, that's, mm. that, that'd be, you know, that would be the greatest honor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Reminds me of the African story that we've shared before. It's traditional. Yeah, it's their name song. We could write them a name song at six years old. That would be incredible. Mm. Sorry for hearing the dogs. Of well, they're singing right now. Here. The dogs have their, <laughs> they, they have their soul songs, too. That's true. But yeah, in Africa, in many African traditions, I don't know if it's universal, it's a big continent, but uh, certainly in some African communities, they have a tradition of, of naming giving a spiritual name to a child even before birth, maybe with the help of the village shaman, priests, and so on. And then mm -hmm. the parents, along with the close family, and even the community sing, learn that soul song, the name, and sing it to the mm -hmm. child even before birth and after birth. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and then when that particular person, mm -hmm. if they go astray, if they act out in the society in a way that's not you know most productive then rather than condemning this person sending them to some prison or punishing they gather around the person and they sing that name song and as a way to remind that soul of who they really are yeah yes. it's their punishment <laughs> Hari Rajkar is giving heart she's the one that actually said when she listened to her name song that we composed for her she said it, it felt like that like it was mm. a tribe calling her her soul back mm. to remembrance so thank you for that but yeah. faking it <laughs> faking mm. it who's ever faked it <laughs> you <laughs> i was trying to think if i have or not i mean maybe in the past because you know in early days well, of it makes sense for it a teenager or whenever a woman yeah if, if because, i was having like a one night stand or something and we're so wasn't educated. enjoying it yeah. and yeah. <laughs> just wanted to be over whatever i don't know um yeah i possibly could have i don't recall any specific time but definitely not uh, within the past decade or two <laughs> but um but i know many friends this is one of the have. Reasons, right? You just you just outlined it's a big reason. So I'm, we're curious again to get your feedback. Mm -hmm. She's not enjoying it, whether it's you know the, the the person she's with, she doesn't feel a good connection, or she's just not in the mood and she's feeling like, but she still wants to you know. Mm -hmm. Or if you know someone's in a more old school type marriage situation, mm -hmm. then. They may just to make their man feel good about himself and mm -hmm. it's all about pleasing him and that's the way it's been in this patriarchal society for eons so it's nothing yeah. to be ashamed of it's it's what it is and, and she wants to get it over with like she, she, right? she knows that if she, if she if she appears to be excited that it is it is can be quite uh, arousing for the the man if we're talking mm -hmm. about the traditional male female connection um I yeah, know just from to me. hear the yeah. sounds. Yes, mm -hmm. but she learns, right? <laughs> Probably from an early age mm -hmm. when she starts to engage with sexual union. That um... yeah, and in which case, some women may do it for the man to help him along, mm -hmm. even knowing that it's fake, and he knows it is too. But just it's a way to help him along. So that's you know nothing that's... wrong with that. That's another interesting side of the story that I, I didn't really think about, consider until now, because I didn't really uh, spend too much time thinking about it today. But um, yeah, it makes me think of when we get into role playing or mm -hmm. even when it gets really extreme, like S&M, dare I say it, I, think I don't <laughs> really, that, that kind of freaks me out. But it, it, I know there's a big percent of the population get in, into those kinds of things and so then the vocalizations and different role playing things like that become integral part of the whole mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know from my own experience i can't so i 
But, um, and then there's the other side of the female equation where a large percentage of women don't orgasm or haven't experienced orgasms. It's another, yeah. And so maybe they don't even know what it's like. So they just, the, 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 maybe the sound even for themselves gets them to some place. Um, but it is true that uh, many women can't vaginally or they you know only clitorally or um or not at all and that's uh could be to past traumas or could you know for many reasons mm -hmm. what do you guys think <laughs> anyone have any stories to Cut, share relax yes cold. Yeah, that's a bit not completely relaxed or comfortable with a partner. Mm -hmm. yeah, we did a little research last night when we had this idea to make this a topic for discussions. And that, that was one of the first things that showed up um, in our research was, was that, 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 that um, the traditional male-female relationship that a lot of women don't feel satisfied or, the, or the, 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 their partner is too much in a hurry. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give them enough time, doesn't give them the attention they need in foreplay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is a lot of joy. We don't want to get um, to the dark humor. I'm sure you guys probably heard some jokes about that. Yeah, well, a <laughs> lot of what we've learned about sex in our culture, unless you have very open and honest parents that were willing to speak with you about these things or a mentor or something most of us learn from porn from movies mm. from stories uh, stories that friends would share from watching porn you know in high school or whatever um even middle school now i mean it's just getting younger and younger mm. and so it's quite frightening you know the, the average age of uh, Children really um, mm -hmm. you know, that are first introduced to pornography online. I feel mm -hmm. grateful I was that didn't even exist when I was growing mm -hmm. up. Uh, but because now I think it's less than ten even in some places. Like yeah. kids are not even pre-adolescents. You know, really, really. Right, and the way they present sex and pornography, as many of us know, is very. Aggressive. aggressive it's fast it's just getting to the climax that is like the end all be all goal and it's it's not about love and riding those waves of orgasm because the women can orgasm many many times even the man they can have full body orgasms um when we learn how to ride those waves and maybe some tantric techniques to really keep it going and, and learn to control and, and raise that energy up as opposed to just let it spewing out um yeah so <laughs> it's only really getting warm in here <laughs> anywho Kind of lost where I was going with that. <laughs> I think I distracted myself. Well, we have a few oh, comments here. Oh, that's okay. Oh. says a woman needs to feel safe enough so she can relax. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Just feel safe and supported. And relaxation is key. Ah, yeah. Dodge says she's only faked it during phone sex. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> a woman is water. It's so true. <laughs> Adi Jai Dev Kar. Yeah, and the, the womb is water, sacral chakra. Mm -hmm. That's why she can ride those waves of orgasmic bliss. Well, it's interesting that, you know, we already had a couple of people mention relaxation being key. Um, it, it's ironic in a sense that men don't really know that. And that's part of the problem that they, mm -hmm. because, because men, I think, are trained to have. The tension is good. Friction oh. and tension <laughs> is how you stay erect and, you know, movement, energize, energize. And um, so for a lot of men, relaxation equals flaccid mm -hmm. lingam, right? Um, which, of course, is, is far from the truth in, in, in tantric teachings, right? The opposite. Um, <laughs> 
So if if that's the case with a man, if he's been trained in this way, like you said, with pornography kind of um, only serves to reinforce that mistaken belief, that then he, he won't be able to understand a woman's need to, for, to be relaxed. It seems to go counter to his mm -hmm. beliefs, right? That sex is this, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is sporting, <laughs> right? But like adrenaline, right? Right. <laughs> Go for the goal. <laughs> well, that's a great point. What Valerie makes here, she says, I'm not a faker. I can tell men expect it at a certain point. Usually feels like an ego thing. It's certainly frustrating when my partner has been focused on orgasm and not the intimacy or pleasure of each other. Yes, mm. or for each other. Anytime they focus on the goal, right? It was hard. It took me a long time because I, I grew up in that same, with that same thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't get proper education. That's, mm -hmm. that's the first big mistake right a huge issue yeah, it's societal fault. issue it's the... sex education <laughs> in with school, <laughs> I think was, I don't know if there was any at all like birds and bees and the parents didn't want to talk about it so mm -hmm. we did take you know kind of take our parents books right and they weren't looking kind of thing right um, magazines or yes yeah so yeah i was gonna say something else <laughs> My partner has been focused. Yeah, so there's again, yeah, this focus on the, the goal, mm -hmm. <laughs> touchdown, right? <laughs> the climax, of course, which in this case, again, with that tension release, it's the climax is comes and goes, it's, it's over, right? Mm -hmm. So it sort of begins. So but the, the, that, that obsession with the goal, mm -hmm. which is, as Valerie pointed out, then takes him out of the present moment, really being present with his lover. And, being responsive and sensitive to her needs. Yes, and, and traditionally, and women haven't been as comfortable being vocal about their needs and being able to mm. stand in their power and say, this is what I am wanting and needing, and this is how to please me. <laughs> and it's just so counter everything we've been taught. And it's tricky, it's cause, yeah, because men, men can feel um, I wish we could get more men responding here too. So maybe <laughs> if you're listening, if you're a guy in the future, please feel free to yeah, we'd comment. Love to hear from um, because it can be intimidating. We know this, right? Yogi Bhajan taught us this too, right? The, the woman is 16 times, so, so he said like 16 times more powerful than men, and all things being kind of equal. He said, double you, oh man, woman. <laughs> I still think, you know, if a man can realize. Don't take it too literally. It's if a man can realize his feminine, you know, really, mm -hmm. you know, that inner marriage, then, that, you know, this sort of balances scales a little bit. It's intimidating when a woman is in her power and when she's expressing her sexuality and verbalizing it too. Um, she has to, you know, it's often it's necessary for her to be somewhat gentle, gentle <laughs> with your delivery. <laughs> calculated you know timing is right because if you mm. if the timing is wrong like if you're in the middle of the sexual it can you don't right? want to emasculate no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. timing timing <laughs> finesse and grace ladies yes <laughs> but here's the other thing i i, I like there well, well let's see what you know let's see what mandy says what does she say a woman is the element of water she needs to be kept on simmer gently boiling away with eye gazing and intimacy. Ooh, I like that. Mm. Yeah, let her simmer, simmer, simmer to mm -hmm. slow boil when everybody wins, right? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, eye gazing is one of the most intimate acts you can do with any person. And it's profound because it's it, it gets that sexual energy moving, that kundalini moving but it raises it up to a higher level. It raises it through that spinal column into the higher centers. So it's not just staying stuck in the lower triangle, if you will, the first three chakras. So yeah, eye gazing is a really powerful tool to get that energy moving upward. And then it's, it's then you get, that's when you get into like the full body orgasmic feelings and that Eros living in mm. an orgasmic state where eating becomes orgasmic or watching a sunrise or mm. you know, touching mm. velvet <laughs> what have you it's, mm -hmm. 
eye gazing can really bring you there. It's a powerful nice. tool. We like to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice to close the eyes too sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, but yeah, eye gazing totally um, helps. And um, I think a lot of things are coming out of my, uh, around this. Um, yeah, so yeah, witnessing your partner and um, oh yeah, yeah, the communication thing. And sometimes it, it is necessary. You, you, and it, don't we cannot ignore it. It's not. It's you know. It's silly, right? To to try to block it. Something's come up, right? Emotions or emotion feeling, and the only really logical step or mature step is to take a break mm -hmm. <laughs> relax <laughs> you know, again this is the thing about that outcome fixation right the goal the goal line right mm. um it can work on the woman too because because she, she's feeling that too and if, oh if, if i if i stop, prevent him then you know kind of thing um so again this is for me a sign of a mature relationship is when it can stop we can stop take a break in at any point during the, the sexual journey. Mm -hmm. And if they need to talk or just be quiet, just lie together, mm -hmm. just hold one another. Mm -hmm. A lot of emotions can come up. It's powerful. It's healing. <laughs> healing mm -hmm. yoga. It's yoga, yeah. Mm -hmm. Most profound. Yeah. So 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 the meme that the meme that we saw when we did a little research last night, I kept coming up. We, we, we decided not to share it. Well, I did, I think, kind of side notes. <laughs> in the comments, maybe. <laughs> yeah, or in my stories. Are you guys looking at my stories on my home page? <laughs> I, I keep the story thing going on. Having fun with that. Um, the basic meme, it's a bit cliche, but, you know, the, the woman says to her partner, whoever says, where she says, I'm faking my orgasms because I'm committed to the relationship, you know, I'm, or I'm, you know, I'm really into the relationship, and kind of, and then the man, of course, is responsible. I'm actually I'm faking the relationship because I'm, I'm really into the orgasm. <laughs> yeah, there are okay. several of those. Can anybody relate to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's coming up a lot, so I imagine it's pretty common. Valerie says, I'd like to hear from people whose partners aren't into yoga or kundalini. How do you introduce these topics? Mm -hmm. That is a Good wonderful, question. wonderful question. Anybody mm -hmm. have any experience with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be tricky. It can be very tricky, especially if, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, well, we don't. Um, yeah, I just called it a form of yoga, like call it red tantra. But we don't have to use this vocabulary. When we're speaking about sexual intimacy. And even when we're talking about vibration, frequency, a lot of people are aware that certainly people are drawn to school of nod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, some awareness of energy it's become like yeah, mainstream I think, in the last decade or so people, you know if you say aura if you talk about the aura for example most people get it right most people, most people aren't going to look at you like <laughs> you know like maybe 20 years ago or something like, mm -hmm. or, <laughs> you know do we have a field we've got an energetic field electromagnetic, electromagnetic field. field it's measurable yeah. you can even photograph it purely in photography and they've scientifically proven that our heart has its own electromagnetic field. So there's an aura around the heart in addition to... Yes. Which is much larger than the aura of the brain, mm -hmm. <laughs> by the way. Yes. Just, yeah. And this is part of the problem, again, of course, with, with sexual intimacy and why the faking the orgasm thing might come in. If, if, if one or both people involved, or however number, <laughs> um, are too much here, not not connected here mm -hmm. right? you know it can be frustrating and maybe some of you have had this experience too where you're feeling like i'm in my heart against traditionally more feminine 
way, but it could, it could be the other way. I've had partners in the past, female partners who were, I felt were more masculine, coming from the head more, and more difficulty connecting with the heart. Mm -hmm. That can be frustrating, right? If, if you're if you're really feeling that heart connection, wanting to mm -hmm. open and connect, but the person you're with is stuck up here, yeah. Can you? I can relate. Yes, and in that case, it's draining. Mm -hmm. My experience was when I would have sexual intercourse with someone that's not quite the same nervous system frequency. <laughs> wired to house energy and so much energy is flowing through me um i felt like it wasn't able to be contained within the courtship within the partnership and so when we did engage sexually i felt very drained afterwards mm -hmm. like a loss of energy to the point where i wasn't really interested anymore <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'll get to Kat's question in a moment, because I wanted to, before I lose this thread, so what Seth Kirtan mentioned is very important, the key thing, is basic nod yoga, so you can't fake a frequency. So mm -hmm. whether we're involved in a sexual intimate way with someone or just hanging out, sharing some tea or, or dance, maybe chanting together, if if you if you feel if you see a pattern where your energy is going down, you're feeling drained after spending some time with that person, whether it's sexually sexu or not. Sexually, <laughs> you know, it's worth it's it's a sign, right? There's something something is needs to be addressed here. Mm -hmm. I, ideally, certainly in sexual intimacy, we want to feel elevated, mm -hmm. expanded, right? mm -hmm. inspired. That's why the you know tantric obviously tantric teachings can be very helpful back to Valerie's question because um, it may not be because the partner wants to drain your energy but they don't know any better right and, yeah mm -hmm. exactly they don't mean to they don't know <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. but this and is they're usually not not aware because you know, mm -hmm. they're not as sensitive they're not as sensitized they haven't really felt into what that even means or yeah so this is a basic premise with us with the soul the soulmate program it's about harmonizing lift lifting your energy especially if, if you're if you're single and you're seeking wanting to call in an ideal soulmate to raise your energy to practice like kundalini yoga chanting things like this to, to raise mm -hmm. your vibration at the same time then call attracting like attracts like to mm -hmm. attract someone who can meet you at that same frequency and you can't fake it <laughs> yeah or i mean because if you're aware especially if as your energy your awareness grows with that expanded energy your sensitivity to other people's energy becomes also more acute right so you mm -hmm. can, they can't fake it maybe before right when we were less aware, less evolved, and we, mm -hmm. we could ease more be eas easily duped and yeah, misled. And the best way to truly see if someone's a energetic match to you, do Venus Kriyas together, do white, white tantric tantra. yoga together. When we first met, that's what we did. We went to a solstice and did the three days of tantric, wow. and wow, <laughs> you find the roof off. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was a pretty dang good uh, white tantric practitioner. I mean, I could I could hold my arm up for 62 minutes. Sure, no problem. Um, we were challenging some people around <laughs> us. A lot of people were really digging our vibe and really feeling this powerful energy that's moving through us. But yeah, there, there were some we were people, again, that, like yeah, the, the frequency, time. they weren't aligned with us free, you know, vibrationally, and they, they got triggered. <laughs> in one, one case, she moved. <laughs> we were having too much fun. Our, our joy, you know, was, 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 joy was off. We were just all like this. Of... Everybody's like, a lot of people yeah. are crying. And, oh, my God, they're putting their arms out. Putting my arms out. Oh, I can't do it. And we're just like, Because ah! <laughs> our energy was able to, there was a circulation that was like a, a toroidal, free energy feedback loop to where we were just elevating one another more and more and more and more 
it was just unbelievable. And that's when I knew like our nervous systems are pretty much paired. <laughs> we can both handle this amount of energy flowing through effortlessly because before you clear the blocks, you know, you have to kind of go through the pain and the, oh, and the crying and the, all the emotions that come through. But once you get to the other side of that and you build your nervous system over time through Kriyas and Kat, we'll get to your question. Here <laughs> too. Yeah, um, but that's exactly it. You're building the nervous system to hold more energy. And that's when we knew that we're very much on the same level. Well, I'm reminded again about the eye gazing. So I want to make mention that too, before, in case you forget. Um, because yeah, in white tantric yoga, there's a lot of eye gazing. It's one of the things that makes it so beautiful and profound. Like Seth Kirtan mentioned earlier, like in the red red tantric practice during sexual intercourse, um, sexual intimacy, eye gazing can be very profound. And of course, mm -hmm. it's a if it's one way to, to weed out like who's who's really you know able to meet you at the same frequency. Because if if they're not able to Look, in, look into your eyes, whether in white or red tantric union connection, that's a, that's a red flag, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, because you can't really hide, right? When you're, when you're looking, really gazing into the other person's eyes for an ex extended period of time, all the mm -hmm. barriers dissolve. You're, yeah, you see right into their soul. They become mm. a reflection of you, your reflection of them. It's very profound practice. Eyes are the windows to the soul. Okay, so Kat, thank you. Oh. Any Kriyas for women that you suggest for enhancing things? Oh, mm. one that I love is Sat Kriya. Mm. Sat Kriya, it's, um, that's when we sit on our oh. knees and then we put our arms Rock up pose. overhead like this. But we, well, Better to say sit on the heels. <laughs> yeah, sit on the heels. Yeah, like this. And we're chanting Sat Nam. And when we chant Sat, we're actually pulling the navel in towards the spine. Sat. And then Nam, we're letting it just expand out. So the, the spine stays straight. You don't want to arch the spine at all. You want to keep it nice and straight. The arms are up overhead with your fingers blocked. The women actually have the left fingers on top of the right with the right pinky on the bottom and the men it's the or the masculine if you will um by the way um so if you want to enhance the masculine then the right fingers are on top with the left pinky on the bottom and then the pointer finger straight up so straight up like this and when we chant sat sat the navel comes in nam it just relaxes sat Nam, sup, nam, sup, nam, sup, nam. And the eyes are gazing in between the eyebrows mm -hmm. with just one tenth open, little sliver of light coming in, gazing in and up. Sup, nam, sup, nam, sup, nam, sup, nam, sup, nam, sup, nam. But yeah, it's 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 a more somewhat advanced to do it properly. So we don't want to just go right into it normally without first tuning in. Well, like we do at the beginning of the podcast. And this kind of practice, for sure, better to do on empty, empty stomach. stomach. <laughs> so we're, we're working the navel point like that in that very direct, uh, profound way. Mm -hmm. So good. We could, we could do it up to thirty-one minutes. Mm -hmm. But literally, great. if you just did two minutes a day mm -hmm. as a daily practice, two or three minutes, profound. Mm -hmm. And yes. particularly with sexual energy, if you really want to get that moving, try doing that, Sat Kriya, in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. Fill up the bathtub, like about to navel point or oh, so. Yeah, with water already came up in the. The, the women with water, it is. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, we're both water signs. <laughs> so if you haven't tried Sat Kriya in the bath or in a body of water, like in a lake or something, beach, I yeah. highly recommend it. Yeah, we like to improvise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> action more than talking, says Nicole. Yeah, action mm -hmm. speaks louder than words. One of our favorite sayings in the School of Nod. 
action speaks louder than words. Another way I like to say it is my, my theater teacher's teacher, the master, Sanford Meisner, put it this way. He said, an ounce of behavior is worth a pound of words. Yeah? This is <laughs> very key. Like, that's why we say be, be impeccable. We've embellished the, the Toltec agreements. Number one, be impeccable with every word, thought, and action. Mm -hmm. That's why you see politicians they often hide their hands when they're giving speeches or debates. You're watching the debate, but watch their hands, right? Hands can't lie, right? So, so they, they tend to do this because right? they don't want to... Don't reveal anything. <laughs> mm, <hands are> done. <laughs> <laughs> and the voice too, if you listen to the, the tone of the voice, the, the voice itself, not the words. The inflections, the tonality, mm -hmm. the rhythm, the vibration, the breath, how the person's breathing when they're speaking. Mm -hmm. Posture. Yeah. So yeah, yoga does apply to all of these. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if a person is, about that with their conscious communication. Yeah, if a person is angry or want aggressive, they tend to do this, right? They get they're like, like leaning into the other person, like, like right, and shoulders back, <laughs> or like or maybe four. And the like, chin up. Yeah, they lift the chin up like That's this. That's a sign of like I'm above you. Aggression. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> So we keep the chin locks. And then the voice, the voice is affected too. If you do this, right, your voice gets eh, 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 like, 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 you know, the, the <laughs> current occupant. Oh my god! You know it's funny. Okay, let's not okay, talk about him, <laughs> please. It was like the worst uh, of two. Like when they were the, when it came to those two idiots, like debating. I was like, I, 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 I can't imagine having to listen to her voice for four years. <laughs> But I don't know if he, if he who's worse, you know. <laughs> His... But cat, no, you're not rude at all. That was a fabulous question, and we thank you so much for asking. Yeah, but thank you so much. Thank you all for your feedback. It's wonderful. Nicole says, then they see also small breathwork exercises and listening to mantra music have both helped me introduce partners to Kundalini Yoga. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, yeah, that's beautiful, Nicole. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, Valerie, oh, she's Nicole is um, just doing little breathwork exercises. Yeah, engage. Yeah, take out, make it fun. Make take it. Take out all the, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't even have to be, oh, we're going to do yoga now. It's just, let's breathe hey, you. let's just try something mm -hmm. fun. Let's put on some music and mm -hmm. let's just look at each other and breathe and see how we feel and touch mm -hmm. each other in the heart or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, introduce it slowly in those fun, playful, innocent ways that engages the other person. Yeah, I've been teaching Kundalini Yoga for about 25 years now. And so it's been quite a, quite a journey and ride. And I like to, anyone who's worked with me for any amount of time, I like to use the term applied Kundalini Yoga. So, yes, yeah, this is a good example to Nicole. Nicole shared that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how can we apply Kundalini Yoga in our everyday activities outside of the, the yoga studio or your meditation space? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are unlimited ways to do that. Yeah, and the mantra music now is, there's just such an amazing <laughs> variety of genres and styles that, yeah, it's mm -hmm. something for everybody now with mantra music. It's really great time to be so, living we have many different styles in our compositions so spice of life right? uh, i can't go to cure i'm very i'm a bit of a kirtan snob it's one of the reasons <laughs> because i i can't i don't want to go to a kirtan where every chant sounds like the previous chant you know and sometimes they do the, even the same mantra mm -hmm. but they might change the mantra but the the music everything else Stays the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Kat's asking now, so do you think it's better to learn Tantra from a class or books? What do you recommend? Mm -hmm. some good questions. Very yeah. good question asker, Kat. I love your questions. Thank you. Well, the answer, the obvious answer is Poe. The easiest answer is Poe. <laughs> Which means yes and no. Po is the opposite of maybe. Po is based on the fact that there is no absolute yes 
or no mm -hmm. in this world of the 3D world of duality. In other words, both are, are good. It really depends on the individual, the time, the moment. Um, yeah. Because it's a journey. It's a journey that's led by your own intuition, your own inner guidance, the guidance that's wanting to come through. And it can show up through books. It can show up through people. It can show up through YouTube videos. However you feel called is what's best for you. Yeah, because now we add to that all the virtual <laughs> options, right? We, we've started to do that. I, I, I didn't see that coming when I started teaching yoga that I would be doing online, online courses. courses and programs. <laughs> it's kind of fun, right? And be able to reach to a large audience around the globe. It's kind of mm -hmm. Cool, you know? Adi, Adi. Our dev car is in mm -hmm. Scotland, I believe. <laughs> it's very late now in Scotland. <laughs> yeah, and the different modalities that'll come to you, the different teachers that will be you'll be drawn to will be at specific times when you're ready. When the mm -hmm. when the student's ready, the teacher appears, and vice versa. When the teacher is ready, the student appears. So that attraction, that like, that frequency. When you reach that frequency that matches whatever teacher or book or article that you're meant to read that's when it'll call it in and you'll get the guidance that you need exactly when you need it. So just trust the process. Yeah, many teachers today are, are, are using all of the above. Right? We, we mm -hmm. want to, to reach our students in, in any way, in every way possible. I, I, I have a book that's still unfinished, <laughs> Kundalini, The Shamanic Roots of Kundalini Yoga. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to get that out there because I've got some other books that are <laughs> okay, waiting to be. <laughs> um, we're doing some online programs, which is going really well. I'm super happy about this. And, um, and of course, we want to invite people from the online programs to come here, wherever we are right now. We're in, in beautiful Guatemala. It's a perfect spot to do retreats. And, mm -hmm. and we do have, we're doing Kirtan every Friday. It's a lovely space, magical space, mm -hmm. teaching classes here. So, of course, yeah, one-on-one -on -one is magic there's something mm -hmm. very magical about that to be yeah to do it in person yeah. is the icing on the cake mm -hmm. what i like to say is i like if i if i hmm? when the when the time is right that's when yeah it locks in and then it can take you to a whole nother level it's a quicker yeah yeah it's, it's a way to transmute all the codes and frequencies that that person or couple has and be able to really get the downloads quicker than mm -hmm. yeah, and well, methodologies. Go ahead. So <laughs> 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 uh, I was just gonna say if uh, I always like it if I if I can do at least a little time like it's to do have people come for three day retreats in the Quebec forest. Um, if you can do that at some point um, ideally, towards the beginning of our work together, or work play, I like to say, because um, <laughs> then when, when, we, when we're apart, we, we're doing long distance sessions, whether it's with Zoom or phone, you know, all the different ways we can connect, then we've already established that real time face-to-face you know, -face connection. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? But it could be good the other way too. If you've only if we've only had a connection via the magic of the technology, and then when the time comes, could be weeks, months, years later, when when we finally meet in person, that's pretty cool too, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had those experiences sometimes equally magical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes it to another level at that time. Which book is she referring to? Your kundalini, your shamanic oh. roots of kundalini yoga. Oh, you're referring to? <laughs> I know, right? It sounds so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good book. <laughs> maybe I'll, I, you know, one way I could do it's maybe here on Soul Book, mm -hmm. if you guys like this idea. <laughs> I could start, because this is how some books were composed and, and still are, is just by doing a series, installment. Mm -hmm. I just share one chapter thing. And uh, she, she likes that idea. Um, and but he needs some encouragement. Eventually, you have a book. Done, so yeah. Yeah, I need the, 
<laughs> yeah, the accountability funny. from you all. <laughs> Get this done. <laughs> yeah, creativity is interesting that way, right? I, I'm sure we have a lot of creative people in our community as well who can relate. Right? Some of our best projects, they're, they're not we haven't quite brought them in, or we we start it and then we we delay, we put it on the side. We 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 get distracted by some other creative project, I, project <laughs> idea. Oh, I wonder, the next big idea. And, <laughs> and all these unfinished projects, and I know because I did finish some projects. <laughs> I know what that yeah. feels like. It's amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so. mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we could recommend some other books. I mean, the Kundalini Yoga. Uh, libraries immense because mm -hmm. Yogi Bhajan left, left such a huge legacy including the Venus Kriya yoga so. yeah and the Venus Kriya is just to clarify for those who aren't familiar it's uh, their partner Kriyas that you can do with a partner could be your lover or just any person really <clears throat> as a way to connect and through the duality of another and it's a way to bring that unity through the duality. So it is a tantric practice in that sense. We're going to bring that online too. Th 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 mm -hmm. Things are gradually <laughs> one step at a time. <laughs> Definitely on our list, <laughs> among many other things. Um, but they mainly involve the eye gazing and usually holding a specific posture together or Mudras. chanting a mantra together while you stare into each other's eyes. Um, yeah, there's a whole series of them. So they're really, mm. really fun, really great to explore. Yeah, it's usually practice. sitting like this. Like, yeah, it's usually yeah. sitting across. Knees are almost touching. From your partner. One I love is just putting yeah. your left hand on your heart and the right hand on the other oh, person's oh, yeah, heart. Other, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah right. Left over. Because the right is the giving hand and the left is the receiving. Mm -hmm. To the and then you're just gazing into each other's eyes and when you're yeah. gazing into someone's eyes try not to just look at one eye or the other try and look beyond even the face so widen your perspective to where you're actually well, almost going cross-eyed <laughs> well the easiest way to do this is focus here it's gaze, we call it gazing there's a difference between looking and gazing but to, yeah to focus mm -hmm. at the third eye point to soften the gaze at the same time so that, you know, like Seth Kirsten said, you see the whole person. You have to practice gazing because it's not the same as looking. Mm -hmm. right? The same way there's difference difference between hearing and listening. You know? And you could be just doing that, just like Seth Kirsten said, being silent together, maybe listening to Mantra, one of our recordings. <laughs> That's some good time share recordings, touching mm -hmm. stuff coming out. <laughs> Listen to the dogs howling in your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me laugh because um, <laughs> the project is so much fun. Um, also because, you know, the thing with, with Pornography, as opposed to what I call um, erotic art, even in film, some some of the older there is an erotic film uh, heritage, which is beautiful, like uh, the ancient Kama Sutra drawings uh, from the Taoist, you know, and so on. Beautiful, it's the most beautiful art ever created, right? Um, but like we were saying earlier, that there's no uh, action so much. Well, not like we see in, in, in this pornography, which is totally different. It's violent. It's, mm -hmm. it's aggressive, violent. And, um, and this is why, you know, it doesn't really work now as, as an art form, per se. Because if two people are, it's like white tantra. It can be the same, right? Two people are just gazing at each other yeah. can just be right? <laughs> together they would be doing the yab yum and there's no there's not really any external movement happening right? you know 
So this person is really sensitive to the vibration, what's happening on the inner level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why. miss it entirely. <laughs> yeah. And why the paintings are better. <laughs> we, we talk about erotic art. Uh, music. Dance, perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've, we're gone over our hour mark. How, how are you guys doing? It sounds fantastic. I think you should share your book. Who wants to hear some of Haridam's book? <laughs> piece by piece. Little by little, as he exposes it to this beautiful inner circle. We love you all so much. It'll be a really fun way to um, connect, eh? Log gazing. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> Sat now. Nicole wants to hear your book. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome Roxana. Or read your book, I should say. Aw gazing. She's aw gazing. Aw gazing. Heart. <laughs> Hari yeah. Ashkar wants to hear the or see the book too. <laughs> oh, yeah? Where did you see that? I'm interpreting hearts. The hearts? Yeah. yeah, we want to see it. Hari Nam. Come on, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It's, it's one of these, the du speaking of dualities, right? I, I, I found out not so long ago that Amazon this huge company that was kind of taking over the world it's the new right, google river it's like they make it so easy for you right not only to do ebooks but to publish books they can do it on demand they got, they got it all it's automated so they mm -hmm. can, can self-publish publish they do everything for you they do the so cover you, yeah the duality is what i'm hearing i'm hearing more <laughs> There's a dark side of Amazon, right? And how they've got defense contracts and all that. So, like, it's and, and, and how they treat their their labor. He's the richest one. Well, some people say he's the richest man in the world now. Just hmm. bald, I don't, bald men. I don't know. Let's do some more research on options for publishing then. Yeah. If anybody knows I have any. trouble, I have trouble <laughs> trusting <laughs> bald men. I don't know why. I don't know, maybe it's a past life <laughs> thing or something. Like, you're just so fortunate to have such a beautiful head of hair. I'm curious. Any women in our podcast right now who who find bald men attractive? They can be very attractive. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I love your curls. But I like I like to see if, if if a man doesn't have any hair up here, I like to see some hair here, even if he has. Either way, but if he, especially if he doesn't have any hair here, right? It's nice if he, don't you think he, he should have some hair here at least? <laughs> I know some men, they don't have any choice. They right? each their own, you know? Everybody's <laughs> got different. Valerie's, thank you, and Cass's thanks. Aww, thank you all. <laughs> thank you so much for participating. Yeah, it's, it wouldn't have been the same this. without you, mm -hmm. so... Bless you. Thank you. Yeah, I feel feeling like we get more you. feedback, more response. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went out on a limb, you know. We haven't. Um, mm. We discussed yeah. conscious sexuality. We have a podcast on that in the past. So if you want to go to our They're past archived, videos, yeah. there's the conscious sexuality one. But um, yeah. on YouTube as well, we have a YouTube channel. We we often upload these podcasts mm -hmm. onto. What's the YouTube channel? Soul, but connecting soul to soul. Same name. Same name. It's easy to find. Oh, what did? How did I? It's my favorite fetish. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite fetish, darling? Oh, bald. Bald, <laughs> bald is beautiful. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, everybody's got different, different likes and needs and <laughs> yeah. Polish little cue ball. <laughs> And as we teach in our Soul to Soul Mate program, we don't want to get attached to the form and the look. It's yeah. more the feel. It's how this person makes you feel. It's how you feel when you're around them. That's what's most important. I do like the feeling of the hair. Because like, I've cut my hair off on occasion. <laughs> it's all or nothing with me, right? This is my tent. I, I, can't, I can't just ha have a little trim. I have to cut it all off. I'm going to cut it. I'm gonna... And I love the feeling of the... The hair is when they're really mm -hmm. short. It's it nice. So, so if I, it feels good, <laughs> right? And if I meet, if I meet, have to meet someone who has not ball. I think I. <laughs> they just have the you know little crop, right? It's just so soft. I love to run, run my hand 
over it. I usually ask, do you mind? <laughs> Strangers. Well, usually they don't mind because it feels so good, right? It feels good to, yeah. I love people I mean, playing with my hair, so I can only imagine with the little stubbles that would feel. <laughs> yeah, we usually we do a music interlude, but all right, we're gonna end. I think <clears throat> we just had so much fun talking. This yeah. One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was such great questions and feedback mm -hmm. from you all and sharings. Thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, his bald head's gonna like velvet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not they, buying it. They take care of their skin. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> we'll go ahead and seal this beautiful evening together with our long time sunshine song. Are you still thinking? And if, well, we have a call to action too. If you're yeah. feeling like you really need some support right now. If we've touched a nerve or two. <laughs> um, you can book a free breakthrough call with us. Yes. And actually, right now, we opened our calendars for even more spots so that we can take more calls. We would love to speak with you. We're making ourselves available because we have five more spots available in our Soul to Soul Night program before the prices go up. So this is a very exciting time for us and to be at the stage in our business and in our program. It's really working and it's really growing. And um, we'd like to extend this offer now for five more people. If you would like to learn more about this program or even just to talk to us, we would love to speak with you. It's a free call. And uh, I'd like to get to know you a little more. Yeah. See how we can help. Taking a long time, sun shining on you. All I surround you and the pure light within you guide your way.
may that pure light of your soul, your true frequency of you, that authentic truth that you are, shine through and radiate in all that you do, all that you say, every thought you even think to yourself, so that you may uplift those around you and you may attract that which is in perfect alignment with you because you are not faking it. You are being you, authentic and true. Sat Why did you keep us Oh, I'm seeing some hearts. <laughs> Thank you for all the hearts. Thank love you, everybody. Love we love you so much. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next, next week. Time. Sat down. Stay tuned. <laughs>